The year is 1990. It's been two years since the mysterious disappearance of Edward Crone, and you are at this abandoned theme park wanting answers. But should you take a visit to this theme park? Let's find out. Hi there everybody, my name is Warwick and welcome to Warwick Reviews, where today we're going to be checking out a PS1 style horror game called Crow Country. Thank you very much for watching. If you're the first time here, give us a like, even a subscribe. I'd love to have you part of this journey. My name is Warwick and I normally stream on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Warwick, and you also find me here in YouTube. So Crow Country is a game from SFB Games and I do want to thank them for the review code and also to Neon Hive. I really appreciate it. This game has been on my radar for quite a while. I really like my horror games, like my old school ones. I grew up with Resident Evil, Silent Hills, and so to still see a PS1 styled horror game in 2024, which is really cool. And also came out on my birthday as well. But we're going to go go through basics about the game, about the premise of it, what I liked about it, and everything else that uh, is of interest. And we'll get stuck in. So you start the game, and straight away you can tell just the atmosphere. It's not shying away from its inspiration. Like you, you start up the menu. And you got this grainy menu, sort of just saying crow country, like it's pixelated, it's slightly blurred, and you feel like you have just built up like a PlayStation 1 video game. Press start game, and then you've got your settings. So you've got your menu, you've got new, load settings. I always like to check settings when I can. And you've got a basic set of settings here. So you've got game settings. So you've got vibration, extra lives, and aiming camera swivel. So standard stuff, extra lives actually gives you more lives in the game. So if you want to make it a bit easier experience for you and not have to keep resetting or restarting, you can add some extra lives and aiming camera swivel. So if a camera for you, then you have sound control. So you've got music, SFX, ambient speech, and UI SFX. Standard stuff, you can change bits and bobs how you want it. What's actually quite cool about this is I like changed around with things. So like if you didn't want music, you just have the ambience and stuff, which is really quite cool. I think some games have it all connected. So having an option just have ambience rather than music or vice versa, I think it's a nice touch. You've got your graphics. So there's one set of graphics. It's literally gameplay HUD. Sure or not, an exit arrow. So there are obviously various doors and stuff that you see in the playthrough where there'd be arrows to sort of you can know that you can go in or out. You can just basically have them off or on. And I do like this. Like, I would have personally liked to see more options to maybe change different styles of the game, like make it even really pixelated or different style or maybe have like a like filters. But I do feel like this does keep with the style of PlayStation where, you know, there wasn't a lot of settings available. It was very basic. So having graphical settings and having two options, I think it works in the feel of what the game is trying to do. And then you got control settings so you can actually change the layout so if you want inverted you can shoot or reload you can change button layout so change which ones you want camera rotation combat controls change classic or modern if you want to you got that there and then you can change it as well within the game so you're not stuck with it and then you start the game and you've got two choices you've got survival horror or exploration mode survival horror danger may be lurking around every corner and exploration mode is you will not be attacked experience the game freely i really really like this i've said this before in video games and especially reviews if you watch any others i've been a very big advocate of these especially in horror games is i love these options and allows people to check out these games how they want people argue and i've seen people argue like well if you, if you don't want to be scared why do you want to play a horror game people like playing games that maybe challenge them or scare them or have a cool story or just try something new you know but people may not like certain aspects for it people may really like horror games but not like the gore and stuff so with this example exploration mode is you can explore the theme park there's a banner theme park freely without the fear of being attacked by monsters i think that's a great thing you know it means that people can just try it out they can get a feel of it it's very still very spooky and very eerie absolutely but being able to play this without that fear will help pe more people play these games and i think that's a great thing and again you can choose how you want to survival horror is the standard but you've got these options if you want them it doesn't change how you, anyone else enjoys the game it just gives options for more people to explore these games that may wouldn't otherwise for me i did play survival horror because i do like my survival horrors and get the full choice of the game and then the game starts and you see the year 2024 and it zooms back to 1990. And so we play a character we believe called Mara. As it says, if anyone asks, my name is Mara, Mara Forrest. And they're a special agent, Forrest, and they're here 
to this abandoned theme park called Crow Country as the owner has gone missing for quite a while actually and basically I've gone to investigate and we literally straight into the game so if you grew up with PlayStation 1 type games especially like Resident Evil or Silent Hill you will feel very much at home in this the style they've done is incredible like it feels like they sort of pre-rendered backgrounds of those types of games yet it's not pre-rendered like it's fully 3D but you can actually turn the camera around and the environment does move with you which is really cool and the aiming is free so you can actually move it around it's not like it's forced you can actually move it up and down if you want to and pivot and again it's the control aspect is tank controls you can play modern controls as well but there is like tank elements and stuff so when you start aiming you can't move but menu mario got your condition also you hear your heartbeat as well when you're in the menu and basically you explore the game and try to survive so i'm used to resident evil uh, survival horror games so I'm exploring everything. So I see a bin, I'm looting in it. I see a box, I shoot it. I may have shot too many boxes because I ran out of ammo quite quickly and not every box has items in it, unfortunately. I think they warn you as you go. As you go through the game, there are like notes throughout the walls where it's basically a tutorial. It explains about how the game works and different elements that you can get involved in. Like Bombardier, you can check it if you want and it's clear to see what they are on the wall. So you got that there and you basically just go through the game, exploring around you seeing what's going on trying to figure out what's up and feeling very uneasy again the atmosphere they've created here is incredible like you've got this massive crow that you come up to and it's just i was expecting it to move it probably does move at some point and you've got those red barrels and you're like was there a red barrel there don't go attack me what's going on here what's this what's over there you know and there's it is a genuine sense of unease in this game so you explore you come across creatures not much fanfare with the creatures actually in the sense that it's not like a big build up it's literally just you go through a few rooms and stuff a few corridors and then suddenly oh Oh, there they are and they are horrible they're horrible they move weirdly they they flinch a lot they sort of squirm a lot it's really hard to aim at them a lot of times <laughs> And then you can also either choose to run away from them or attack them. You've got these little blob things attacking you. And if you get hit, you get poison. So you've got obviously health and like antidotes you can use. And obviously sparingly use that. And you meet different characters throughout the game. So you've got this character here we saved. who's in the car. Don't know what it's about, but we saved him. And you've got these other creatures that you can interact with, like either the mechanical aspects of the theme park or otherwise, or these weird creatures that can give you wishes. And then you've got puzzles. So you've got various puzzles in various rooms where you can unlock certain elements and some puzzles will be easier than others and it's about working out for the puzzle so there's one there was a code on the floor which the character sees and that one's quite easy and as, as you go through the game there's harder puzzles but sometimes you have to come back so again with these games there's a lot of backtracking in a good way you know you find you go you go somewhere there's a locked door you explore further you find that key for that locked door you go back you explore that and then unlocks other elements and you find another thing to unlock another thing and it's basically like this thing will open this thing etc 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 and you got the save rooms which is really nice you got this like little fireplace like sort of like study area you got like a sit down and you find also what's really cool about this is about the save room is it will hold every piece of like documents that you found so far so if you've forgotten anything or any tips that you found so far you can look back at oh yeah i remember that you got maps as well and just i had a really really good time with this it was a really fun time it very much feels like a game very much from the 90s you know it very much feels like that era of playstation one like resident evil was like the silent hills and stuff and they've done an incredible job like it feels like it doesn't feel like it's coming to come out from this year and i'll say that in the best best way it feels like a game that really knows what is about and really explored and really understood what made those types of games so great obviously graphical limitations was a part of it but I think they help make those games what they are and why they're such beloved franchises to this day. And I think the team at Crow Country have done an incredible job to recreate that element of that style that have those graphical limitations, but use that as an advantage, you know, use that skills at their disposal to make this eerie, unnerving world that you want to explore and feel generally like there's some generally scary moments, like the noises from the monsters and stuff, and you feel very uneasy. You've got this very sort of blocky world, but you feel like you are like on edge all the time because you've got this the atmosphere around you, you've got the look, these weird noises and stuff, and just had a really really good time with this is i think this is a wonderful wonderful little game i think it's a bit of a short sweet game but i think it doesn't overstay its welcome and it does exactly what it wants out to do and i think there's real winner here especially if you like your horror games i implore you to check it out and even if you don't there are modes that you can try explorer mode to get an idea of it if you want to and then if you feel up to it you can go with the monsters but thank you so much for watching i really appreciate it. I had a wonderful time with this game thank you to neon hive and sfb games for the review code i 
really appreciate it. If you would like to see more of my stuff, you are in luck because I've got quite a lot of review videos down below. There's various links where you can find where I am. Also, I stream on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Warwick, and you can find me on socials or wherever I am. Well, thank you so much for watching. Please take care, and we'll see you very soon. Bye-bye.